coming to paperback and e-readers this April, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The goddess next door must take on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess in paperback and e-readers this April. Hi everyone, it's Sean here with a comic review video. Now, Everett Hartzell is an innovator as related to the comic book medium. And your Everett Hartzell, a high school dropout, started his comic book studio, London Night, where he invented the genre of bad girl comics back in the early 90s when he published Razor. And the comic book Razor was the comic book that introduced the bad girl genre of comics comics featuring strong heroines in, who wore skimpy costumes as they took on the bad guys. And his storytelling was some of the best of the genre, and that's the reason why Razor was a smash hit ever since it debuted back in 1991 and went on to sell millions of copies. Now, over the last 20 years, Everett Hartso has continued to hone his craft as a creator, and we see a great evolution of his skills with this book, Bayonet, which he launched in a Kickstarter last year. And I wanted to see how Everett Hartso's skills had evolved, so I put in a pledge to check out Bayonet to see where Everett Hartso has gone as related to his craft. And I have to say, he has taken his craft to the next level with this first issue of Bayonet, and he really has shown why he is a true master of the craft of comic book storytelling, and how he's taken many techniques he has learned over the years and used them to refine his craft for comic book storytelling. Now, your Everett Hartso these days has been working on a movie version of his comic book adaptation of Razor, and he's also working on other productions. And he's taken a lot of the skills he has learned from the craft of screenwriting, and he's used it to really refine his craft of writing as related to comics. And that really shows in this first issue of Bayonet, which he calls a Razorverse cinematic comic. And this comic does a great job of fusing screenwriting techniques with comic book storytelling. Now, the first page is a great fusion of splash page and establishing shot, and it does a great job of taking us to this cabin in Alaska, and it's wintertime. And inside of the cabin, we have Sage, who is taking care of a young girl, Nix, and it looks like they're getting ready to start some sort of combat training. So this is a sequence that I really liked. I like the art here because it has a great Gary Frank feel, but it also has that great visual where you can just see the action moving. And from this scene where we start to see the start of the action, it does a great job of doing what a good screenplay does opening up with a nice inciting incident, which introduces us to the main character, who is Nyx, who is being taken care of by Sage. And this sequence does a great job of introducing the Nyx character. And when I look at the Nyx and Sage character as they're having this little training session, it reminded me a lot of the character of Damian Wayne from DC Comics and his father, Bruce Wayne, but in some ways it reminds me of Damian Wayne and Talia before when he was being raised to be a part of the League of Assassins. But Hartso's writing makes it where the artwork really flows and you really get to see the sequence. And when you look at this image of Nick's charging at her guardian, it really looks like she's moving and charging really fast. So you really get to see dynamism in the action and that's what a good comic does. It takes a static image and it makes it move and it really makes it where you feel like the action is going on in the sequence. Now this training section, it really gets intense and 
we really get to see the, some really intense shots with this whole sequence. And it's very, very well done in establishing these characters, establishing their relationship, and showing us that even though these two people, this woman and this girl, are training with each other, they truly do care about each other. And her trainer, Sage, wants the best for her. And we see that again from the sequence. Now, this next sequence, it, it, it switches over like a movie, and it shows us a great establishing shot of these assassins and how these assassins work for this guy called Cross. And they've targeted the cabin where Sage and Nyx are staying. And they're looking like they're getting ready to set up for an assault on the cabin. And they, and it looks like they're getting ready to do, think they have them, but they don't. And as things are going on, she prepares Nyx to go and get out of there and hold them off. And this first issue does what a really good first issue does. I don't want to give away too much of this first issue because it is an extremely well done first issue. And it really does a good job of setting up a fantastic inciting incident, introducing us to the main character, showing us what the main character wants, showing us a great relationship between the master and the student, and it does a good job of foreshadowing the enemy and also foreshadowing some character development. It built, does a great job of building up a story, and this book really shows how far Everett Hardsoe has grown in his craft as a writer, because right now Everett Hardsoe is now working on his own television and film production company, and he's really taken a lot of the techniques he has learned from screenwriting and applied it to comic books, and that has made for a very well-crafted comic with a very compelling storyline. I mean, as a screenwriter myself and a novelist, I can see how he has really grown in his craft and really changed his techniques to really put this rock-solid story together and really put together a very impressive first issue. And this first issue does what a good first issue does. A good first issue introduces us to the main character, introduces us to the goals that they have internally and externally, and also introduces us to the relationships between the characters and it gives us a reason to care enough to pick up the next issue. So Everett Hartso did a fantastic job on this book. The artist did an amazing job on these panels and the sequencing and the coloring really pops. So this is a really rock solid comic and it really shows again Evo the evolution of Everett Hartsell's craft with the bad girl genre, and it shows how a master has taken the genre of bad girl comics to the next level. And using, again, those techniques from screenwriting and taking these techniques of music, making things a bit more cinematic, that gives us a much more richer story and a bigger and broader picture. So I look at this bayonet and this really shows how a master takes the techniques and takes them to the next level with comic storytelling. So I can highly recommend you pick up Everett Hartso's Bayonet because it's a really great comic, a really great start to another great action heroine. And it shows how an innovator can reinvent a genre because many of these other creators out here of bad girl comics, they oftentimes start to rest on their heels. They'll create a great character and then uh, what they will do is their skills will start to get stale. They'll start creating and repeating the same stories. They won't, won't go out here and try to learn new techniques. And that's one of the things I liked about Everett Hartso with Bayonet is he's shown that he has learned new things and he's applying new techniques and he's done all this and it's made the bad girl genre of comics fresh for the next generation of readers. So that's why I can highly recommend you go out here 
and pick up Everett Hart's Those Bayonet. I'm sure that there will be a Kickstarter for the second issue. And once that Kickstarter is announced, you definitely want to pick up this first issue to find out what happened in the first issue. Because I'm not going to spoil this book because it's absolutely fantastic. And I, want to, and I don't want to spoil the hard work of a great indie creator and a great innovator who invented one of the most profitable genres in the comic book business, a genre that many creators have gone on to make a lot of great, fantastic characters, but we wouldn't have this entire genre if Edward Hartsoe didn't go out here and do like I do with the SJS Direct Imprint, take his own money and put it behind his own character, Razor back in 1991, and he really shows how a creator can go and build themselves up and build and improve on their skills and build and improve on their business because he's not only doing comics, he's doing films and television and again showing us how this bad girl genre that he innovated is still got a lot of life left in it and with great innovation and imagination will be around for many years to come and it looks like he'll be a major player because if he continues to produce great comics like Bayonet, he's going to be the Stan Lee of the bad girl comic genre. Now, I really recommend you get this Bayonet comic and I think that there's gonna be a Kickstarter coming soon and you definitely wanna pick up that second issue and the first issue and I definitely recommend you get Bayonet. Now, if you want to pick up my first comic that I published, e Steam, No Good Deed, you can get that comic on Kindle for 99 cents. And if you want to pick up some of my other books featuring heroines, like the Isis series, the e Steam series, or the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers in 2021, John Haynes, taking care of business. The man who rules the world breaks on a brand new partner to help him take care of business in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, taking care of business in 2021 at online booksellers everywhere.